Good point. Oh. oh, I think that's a bit much. That's better. Good morning, members, officers, and any members of the public who are viewing the live stream of this meeting. Welcome to this meeting of the Grants Advisory Committee. This meeting is being live streamed out to the public, so anyone present in the in the room gives their consent to be recorded. Please, can those present use make note of the guidelines in the room? My name is Councillor Sue Ellington, and I'm the Vice Chair of the Grants Advisory Committee. For the information of members of the public, the role of our committee is to consider and make recommendations to the lead cabinet member for finance, Councillor John Williams, an application on applications made under the council's grant scheme. Councillor Williams then makes his decision, taking account of our recommendations. So we'll move forward. Um, can uh, we start by just introducing ourselves? Um, I think uh, it helps members of the public. Councillor Dalton. Um, yes, hello, good morning. I'm Claire Dalton and I'm one of the councillors for the Fenditton and Fullbourne Ward. Thank you. Councillor Handley. Hello, I'm Bill Handley. I'm the elected member for the villages of Over and Willingham. Thank you. Uh, Councillor uh, John Williams, just... Oh. Yeah, hello, hello. I'm, uh, I'm John Williams. I'm the uh, lead member for finance, and I'm also uh, one of the councillors for Fenditton and Fullbourne Ward. Thank you. Um, I see we have a number of officers present. Would they like to just uh, introduce themselves? At this distance, I have trouble reading your names, so would you like to start at the top? Hello. Hello, I'm Siobhan Mellon. I'm Climate and Environment Development Officer. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Eleanor Haynes. Um, I'm a Climate and Environment Project Officer. Thank you. Hi, I'm Emma Dyer. I'm a Development Officer in the Comms and Communities team. Thank you. Any more? Catherine Hawkes here. I'm also in the commun uh, Communications and Communities team, Communities Manager. Thank you. Thank you. And hello, I'm Rebecca Weymouth Wood. I'm Waste Policy and Climate Manager. Yes. Thank you. Thank you all. Right. Uh, have we any apologies, Aaron? Thank you, Chair. Uh, we have apologies from councillors Joe Hales and Peter MacDonald, but I can confirm that we've quorum for the meeting. Thank you. Any declarations of interest from members? Councillor Hanley? Uh, I would, uh, one of the uh, items today is for St Mary and All Saints Church in Willingham. Although I'm not a member of the congregation or involved in any way, I am obviously the elected member for Willingham. Thank you. Nothing? Right. Thank you. So we'll move on. Can we look at the minutes of the last meeting, which was held on the 31st of January? Um, I've temporarily lost the page. Here we go. Uh, on page one and page two. Everybody happy with those? Yes. Thank you very much. So we can move on to item four, which is the gar zero carbon communities grant scheme options. Um, I will hand over to Eleanor Haynes to introduce the report. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I've got I've got a presentation, so I'll, I'll share my screen for you. Um, Thank you. Can you can you see that? All right. Yes. Yeah, perfect. 
Um, so, so thank you and, and good morning. Um, I'm really pleased to be presenting the recommendations for round four of the Zero Carbon Communities Grant Scheme. Um, so with the council just having approved um, a budget with such a strong and unified focus on uh, climate and environment, I'm really pleased to be presenting these recommendations um, to enable parish councils and community groups in our district uh, to set up their own projects to reduce reliance on fossil fuels and engage the community on climate change. So a bit of background on the grant. Um, so the grant's objective uh, objectives aim to fund projects um, by parish councils, community groups and not-for-profit organisations uh, which engage communities on climate change um, and reduce reliance on fossil fuels. Um, so it's a key way that as a council uh, we can pursue our green to our core agenda um, and we've been able to take all of our lessons learnt from three rounds of the grant scheme so far um, to present some minor changes to the grant scheme in round four. Um, now, this year, there's 120,544 um, to fund the grant due to money left over uh, from previous rounds of the Zero Carbon Community Scheme, um, which was uh, decided in the previous Grants Advisory Committee meeting. So the reasons for the proposed changes. So uh, previous projects have been invited to apply under specific themes of such as cycling or nature, uh, which had to adhere to the objectives of community engagement around climate change and carbon emission uh, reduction. Um, but this meant that projects tended to focus on one of these objectives, which made it really difficult for them to score well against the other criteria. Uh, so we're therefore proposing to replace these themes in previous rounds uh, with two categories of carbon emission reduction and community engagement on climate change. Um, and this means that the objectives of the grants will be better served um, and it will make it easier for projects to score well and to measure and report on their progress. Um, also, the second uh, proposed change is around ring fencing a specific amount for, tra for a training programme for uh, community leaders. Uh, so one of the aims of the Zero Carbon Communities um, pro program um, is to empower groups in the district to undertake their own action. Um, and a, pro a project funded through the first round of the Zero Carbon Communities grant, um, Cambridge Carbon Footprints Net Zero Now training program, uh, trained community leaders um, in the district. And as a result, um, this has helped uh, community uh, climate leaders um, around the district to set up climate groups. Um, so this programme was of a very high quality and well received. Um, and so uh, the groups uh, set up by these community climate leaders um, will now be able to apply for the grant scheme to fund their projects um, and to, to deliver um, sort of uh, comprehensive um, and uh, fully considered uh, applications to the grant scheme. Um, so in order to enable such a project to operate in the coming year and shape applications for the following year, uh, we're recommending the option to ring fence uh, the, um, an amount to procure such a programme. So now on to the options. So um, we're recommending uh, option one, which is to ring fence uh, £15,000 to procure a community climate leader training programme, uh, such as the Net Zero Now project or otherwise. Um, and we th the option then recommends to split the remaining funding between two categories of uh, carbon emission reduction and community engagement on climate change um, in a 70-30 split or otherwise. Um, now we're recommending the 70-30 split um, as uh, the carbon emission reduction projects do tend to cost a bit more. Um, and so this option um, will require a comprehensive information um, guidance, uh, guidance documents and information documents, uh, which are available in Appendix B and C. Um, and this, these documents will help projects to measure uh, their expected outcomes, um, which is what we'll be looking for in the um, applications. So option two is the same as option one, but the funding's not set aside to procure a cl community climate um, leader training programme. Um, and sort of training providers uh, would be able to apply through the grant scheme uh, through the community engagement um, uh, option. 
And then option three is to have no change um, and to have the programme as in round three with three main themes of community building, tree planting uh, and other or, or other other themes. And so um, it's recommended that option one uh, is recommended to the to the uh, lead cabinet member for finance. So a change to the funding timescale is also proposed um, as projects from previous rounds have requested extensions beyond the 12 month completion date to allow them to measure and report on their outcomes. Uh, the recommended option, option one, uh, proposes that projects are given 12 months to spend the funding and additional six months to enable them to report and monitor their outcomes. Option two proposes no change and to keep the funding within the, uh, the 12 month timescale. And it's recommended that option one is recommended to the lead cabinet member for finance. So now a brief note on the funding amounts. Um, upon receiving feedback from the Grants Advisory Committee, the option of reducing the maximum uh, grant amount available was considered um, and we took a, undertook an analysis of the funding. Um, so as we can see from this graph, the majority of projects still applied for smaller amounts, but there were still projects who needed to apply for higher amounts. Um, and this shows that projects weren't um, amounts by the 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 high um sort of higher maximum amount um and in the end nine out of 14 funded projects um applied for less than five thousand pounds um and the higher amount also encouraged uh, match funding for large scale projects um which we were able to bring in um significant match funding um so uh, presented uh, good value for money projects so um, to sum up uh, the summary of the recommended options um, for the thematic changes, um, it's recommended that option one um, to uh, have a community to procure a community climate leader training program um, and then have two op two categories for community engagement on climate change and carbon emission reduction. Um, is uh, so we recommend that the grants advisory committee re recommends option one to the lead cabinet member for finance. Um, and then in terms of funding scale time scales, um, we recommend that the grants advisory committee recommends option one um, for the 12 month spend period and the six month monitoring period to the lead cabinet member for finance. Um, and we also recommend that no changes to the funding amounts are made. Thank you for listening. Um, and does anyone have any questions? Thank you. Councillor Dalton. Yeah, thanks very much. Um, so could you just uh, tell us a little bit more about who's making the recommendations and why? Um, oh, sorry. The recommendations are being made um, by officers. Um, so uh, these have been considered by uh, the um, development officer um, and the um, Rebecca Weymouth Mood, and we've also um, discussed this with um, the head of um, service for climate and environment, um, Bodhi Assam. And, and, and presumably also with the Climate and Environment Advisory Committee. Um, Siobhan, I was just going to say that they've been sent the the, the reports. Um, but uh, and we have had a conversation with Councillor Haylings, um, but it hasn't been before the, the Climate and Environment Advisory Committee. But it is, I think, I mean, in terms of, um, of, of, of understanding where this is, this is coming from, it, it's, 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 a, it's about trying to um, be able to, to to monitor more effectively the carbon reduction that we're that that the projects are um, are delivering, um, and also um, just just it, acknowledging that that actually some of the best carbon reduction pro projects don't naturally lend themselves to um, the, the the broader um, engagement. Um, and, and that, uh, as we've heard, can be a difficulty in terms of the ones that are coming forward. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Martin Khan. 
uh, from I understand the climate um, committee were invited to this meeting, um, and uh, you're representing them, I assume. I, I've decided to come along. Yes, I mean, I'm generally in favour. The points that have been made have been clearly made, and I would really concur with them. Right. Councillor Hanley. No, it's okay. Just, just to be clear, this has been discussed by the SEAC and, uh, and approved by the SEAC. That's really, I think, what I would like clarity on. I mean, it, but I think it's essential that it's been discussed and approved by them. It hasn't come before that committee. So it hasn't got that, that far but it's, with the it, process. It, it, um, it, it is a, a lead cabinet member for finance decision. Um, uh, Chair, I mean, uh, if you don't mind, I mean, that's actually uh, never been before SEAC, before any of the previous rounds of the uh, zero carbon grants that we've run so this is just a, the same procedure that's been through in the previous years um, obviously if members would like us to take it before the uh, climate environment committee that can that can be arranged but it's not been part of the process previously and it, it doesn't actually change the objectives of the of, of the grant so um, in terms of that engagement with or that formal engagement with the climate environment she's first Dalton, I'm sorry, yeah. the, uh, it, we seem to have a freeze on at the moment. So it's our system, so maybe we just hold for a moment while they see if they can make the systems work. I, I, No. Oh, we're back. Sorry, uh, Siobhan, we lost you. It's, sorry, I, I was just saying in terms of the Climate Environment Advisory Committee, um, I mean, the objectives of the scheme remain the same. So this is really just a small, uh, a, a fairly small change. Yeah. Uh, can I just ask Councillor John Williams, you've... Uh, indicated yes thank you chair um, um martin um councillor khan are, are you expressing the view of the committee or your personal view on this i'm expressing my personal view because as i, I saw it from the agenda that was proposed i knew that uh, the, um, in general terms of this uh, this was changing okay. i hadn't seen the final documents so i mean I, if Obviously, if you want to present it to a climate change and environment uh, advisory committee, I'd be quite happy. I personally would be happy about that, but I can't speak for the others because okay. I've not discussed it with them. Um, okay, okay. 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 Councillor Haylings hasn't discussed this with me, and I would, I, I understand what you're saying, Siobhan, but I would, it is, it is quite a big difference from, uh, from what we've done before, in terms of the, of the applicant. And um, I, I, you know, it, it, on the face of it, I, I agree with it, but I would just like it to be passed, you know, just would like the Community Environment Advisory Committee to see it and, and, and have their views on it as well. Can I suggest that it might therefore be appropriate if we as the Grants Committee, this is a recommendation that we're making to um, Councillor Williams, um, that we, as the Grants Committee, make um, some comments and, and a decision. And that's a recommendation to Council Williams. And then it is up to him if he wants to get further clarification and, and satisfaction from the grant uh, the um, SEAC Committee. May Sorry, Councillor Hanley. May I, yeah, I, I, I would agree with that, Chair. I, I came here, you know, having read the the paper supportive of option one. Um, yeah. I, I'm, you know, if, if I'd heard that SEAC had seen and approved this, I would have had absolutely no hesitation. I, I, I don't have any hesitation, but I think there is a procedure. I think SEAC needs to see it and approve it. Um, I'm happy to go along the, 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 the way that you suggest. 
Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. I would like the SEAC uh, to see it. And I just wanted to know where the recommendations had come from, because although the general principle is the same, the approach is somewhat different with the community leaders being added in. That's something completely new. Um, so that was what was behind my question. So I would, I'm very happy for Councillor Williams to see it and then for SEAC to give an opinion, but also for us today to give an opinion on what we've read in preparation for the meeting. I think that's, uh, that's fair. Uh, I seem to uh, remember, I, cannot, cannot I may be wrong, Sorry. but I seem to remember that the first um, concept of this grant was done in conjunction with the SEAC committee, because I think we had a joint meeting at the time. So it, it would seem that although further iterations of it have not gone before that, the SEAC committee, that that seems to me to be perfectly appropriate that it sh they should be informed and consulted. Okay? So... Yeah, I, I, will, I will be expect... I, I, if it comes to me, if you, if you ask me to make that decision, I will ask for it to go before the SEAC committee. That yep. seems to be... Okay. Uh, okay, so we've sorted process. Now we need to uh, look at comment... And if there is anything members wish to say uh, about the recommendation before we go towards a, um, a vote. Councillor Dalton. Uh, yes, I like the idea of the community leader. Um, and it seems as if that course was particularly good. Um, I'd really want to be sure that um, there was complete access to the how, how would people get onto the course how would one be chosen as a community leader? Um, what would that mean? I, I'm sure that's all to be agreed and thought through, but um, it does sound like a good idea, and I, I just want to be sure um, that it will be rolled out across the district and as many communities as possible will be involved. Can I and just have a... Uh, I was just going to say... I, I'm very keen on the idea of a, a leader, but I didn't pick up anywhere how that leader was chosen and whether it was before an application came in or whether it was part of the application. Can I just clarify that with Siobhan? Yes, so the, the, the um, community leader programme that ran as, uh, as funded by Round One, called Net Zero Now by Cambridge Carbon Footprint, they put wide publicity around, and um, people who and people applied and 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 were taken on 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 that that basis. So, uh, it's likely there would be places for anybody who wanted to be on that program. So you could, you could not actually put an application in for funding for a project, but you could go on the leadership training, absolutely, and, and then put a project in, maybe. Yes. Right, so in fact, they're two separate things. The project is one thing and the training is another thing. Yes, that's right. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Um, Councillor Hanley, sorry, I cut you off. No, no, it's all right. Um, no, I'm, I, I would um, echo what Councillor Daunton said. I, as I said earlier, I'm, I, you know, option one is, is the one that I would be very happy to go with. Can I make one small point, uh, actually, which is actually not to do with the, change, the slight change of, uh, of direction, but the, um, I've had a couple of people contact me uh, about the Zero Carbon Grants, mystified as to what they do for community engagement. They, you know, if they're sort of putting, a, I don't know, solar panels on a roof or something, um, they say to me, well, that's for our community building, but how, how do we engage on that? Um, I know that there is a, a link um, in the paper to um, some advice on that on on the website, but I just just to, just a comment. I mean, could could you make it, you know, more obvious to people how how that works? You know, what they do for community engagement because it'll just save them phoning me up. <laughs> yeah, and, and if I can just come back on that, that actually the um, the splitting of the themes into projects that are primarily about carbon reduction and projects which are primarily about climate um, about community engagement very much addresses that point. 
that some projects just don't lend themselves very well to um, to the wider community engagement. Yeah, thank you. If you could just make it clear, that point clear to people, that would be really helpful. Thank you, Siobhan. So, Councillor Dolphin. Um, yeah. Um, so I'm I'm very glad to see the um, uh, that money will go into the community buildings for energy efficiency, and because we know in particular now because of what's happening more uh, worldwide that energy efficiency is going to become more important than ever. Um, and I notice on page 18 a rather crucial sentence, advice on planning permissions should be sought before applying for the grant. So I do think that uh, many applicants are going to need some hand-holding with that, and I hope that there will be um, sufficient capacity to do the hand-holding uh, if planning permission is needed, and also to give advice quite early on in the grant application that planning permission is needed, because uh, from experience, that has proved difficult for communities. So that's my first point. And my second point is to do with... Um, the help with planning permission is one thing. The second thing is just sort of help with the kind of scale of things that will make a difference. So I think some communities have applied for solar panels where it wasn't appropriate or a building wasn't ready for it or it should have been done at an earlier stage. So that, I think that's a bit of hand-holding at a very early stage and really engaging people to saying, if you're thinking of applying for a grant, get in touch with us first before you do too much work. Thanks. Any other comments anybody wants to make? Anybody who's online? Right. So can we go to a, a vote about the recommendation, then, please? Um, so, I think we do it by affirmation usually, don't we? As long as, um, and we're going for recommendation option one. Agreed. Yeah. Just, yeah. sorry, Chair, I've got another Keep question going. about that. Um, and that's to do with the six month period. Yes. Um, so, could we just have a bit of clarification on that? That's the six month review period after the 12 months, so just yes. maybe if you could go over that again. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so that so that is um, the the uh, projects would have 12 months to complete their projects, um, after which they have to confirm with us that they have spent the the, the money, um, and then they have a further six months um, where they can monitor the impacts and the outcomes of the project. Um, and then after that point, we would expect the end of project report, uh, where they can set out. Um, the outcomes of the project where they have measured um, how it has um, engaged the community or had a reduction in carbon emissions. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I should add that those options are on page six of our notes um, uh, set out there. Uh, I don't think there's anything else to vote on on that particular item. No, no. I we had one lot of options at first and then another. So, yes, I just wanted to be sure I haven't missed anything. Okay. Can we then move on to um, the next item on the agenda, which is community chest funding applications? And that changes our picture to Emma. Hi. Um, Hi. So, on page 37 of your agenda pack, the first application that we're going to review is the Duxford Community Centre, um, which is a charitable incorporated organisation opened in 2014. Um, it is owned by Duxford Parish Council and the trustees who run the building were involved in its initial planning and they also helped to finance it through fundraising efforts. There's 23 and a half years remaining on the lease and they have approximately 36 members who help to support local community activities. So the users of the community centres um, centre have exhausted all storage areas within the building, 
Um, there is a suitable um, shared storage area within the building, but this currently contains items used by the community centre cafe. So by moving the cafe bins to outside, the cafe can relocate its equipment, thereby allowing the shared storage space to be freed up for use by other users of the building. Um, and also, since the community centre charges fees for storage, the additional space will help generate income to support its very various char charitable functions. And the cafe will also be able to function more smoothly. Um, so the funding of £2,000 is requested, and this will be to provide a new screened in, um, screened in external bin storage area by extending the raised area between the back of the building and the tennis courts. Um, the total project cost is 8,250 and the remaining 6,250 will come from the community centre's own funds. So just a little bit of um, detail about the work that's required. Um, my apologies, please ignore the last three bullet points for somehow they've um, seem to have required a bullet point. So that, that's not part of the, um, the actual work um, wanting to be undertaken. Um, so they would like to um, take out the existing stone gabions and railings. There will be digging of a trench, providing concrete fittings and the building of a new retaining wall, raising levels with hardcore and creating a concrete path, making good the existing railing and installing two new gates and putting fencing along the new wall. We have um, parish council support. Um, they've issued a letter of support stating that the community centre is an essential aspect of village life. Um, and it's very much hoped that it will continue to thrive for many years to come. In addition, um, since the 28th of July 2020, the Parish Council have contributed um, in total 8,658.26 to the building. Um, they, they also paid for the community centre itself um, initially when it was built, um, and um, its permanent fixed assets are at cost of in excess of £1 million. Um, and they, they basically, to, um, to, to achieve this, they um, increased the preset and borrowed £700,000 on a long term low interest loan. Um, um, what else? Um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, uh, if any questions on this one? Any questions? Councillor Hanley? Um, only that the um, under parish council support. It said that yes. it was going to be formalised on the 10th of February. Presumably it was. Yes, yeah, yes. Okay. We, we received that letter, that email since the application okay. came through. So that was my little bit about um, the issue of the letter of support. So that has been formalised, yes. OK. Are you content? Yes. Yes, Madam um, Chair. Right. General contentment. Thank you very much, Emma. OK. So leading right. on to the next Move one. On. Yep. Um, on page 37, we have Hayden Parish Council Community-Led Plan Subcommittee. Um, so this is our first application for a community-led um, plan ring-fenced um, fund. Um, and this is for the start-up costs of their community-led plan. Um, the subcommittee was set up in May 2021 and consists of two members of the Parish Council and five members of the public. It's hoped that the community-led plan will not only set a direction for the Parish Council, but also help them to understand and respond to the wants and needs of the parishioners from a recreational, religious and demographic, demographic perspective. Um, the plan will include conservation, climate change, planning and social needs. Um, a little bit of activity has already started, including questionnaires, meetings and feedback sessions. Um, and when the plan is completed, it will also include a landscape character assessment from a third party to reflect the special historical and archaeological nature of the parish. And once completed, the questionnaire's feedback responses, action plan and the plan itself will be accessible to the whole community through a variety of media, including the internet, social media, paper, flyers and face-to-face -face discussions. Um, and the entire village will benefit as the action plan is implement, implemented. Um, they would like the maximum amount of funding of £2,000 um, to cover some of the following costs, which include flyers, um, publicity, questionnaires um, and workshops. Um, so the total amount of the project is estimated to be £10,373.57 and um, the Parish Council has a reserve budget of 8350 excluding VAT for the project. 
um, and that without this funding, they will be compromised on cash flow. So additional funding would be very much welcomed. And we've got um, member support from Councillor Deborah Roberts. Um, and obviously being a parish council, they're very supportive. So yep, over to you. Any comments, Councillor Dalton? Yes, um, I'd just like to um, draw attention to the, um, the second paragraph um, where it said that um, it, it, Parish Council helped them to understand and respond to the wants and needs of the parishioners from a recreational, religious and demographic perspective. Now, we know that we can't fund um, any, uh, any faith projects, so I'm just wondering, wanting to understand what that means, a recreational, religious and demographic perspective. Um, I've not actually, <clears throat> to be fair, I've not actually um, seen any of this sort of initial sort of um, um, emails or anything with regards to what exactly is going to be included. This is this what I've been told. Um, so I don't know any more detail than what's been given here, I'm afraid. Um, I think it mainly concentrate, concentrates on the sort of demographic side of things. And obviously the, um, the sort of historical and archaeological nature of the parish is one of the big things that they are um, interested in with the chalk landscapes. So that, that's their main sort of objective as far as I, I understand it. But obviously I can, I can clarify further if required. I suppose my, my initial understanding of that is that um, if you're looking at the whole needs of the uh, parish, the established things like churches and chapels and things are a key part of that community and maybe that's that's the inference there that was what i took it to make read rather than that it would be forwarding religious um interests i mean mm. we use our church and chapel very much as big halls and it's very handy yeah, yeah and I mean, actually with this um the initial consultation, they have had six focus groups in the church in Hayden um, with displays about parish land, so um, and they were very well um, attended. So I think it's sort of, you know, a lot of the community have been involved and are aware of the project. I, I don't want to make a particularly big point about it, but if there is other literature going out, it might be worth just clarifying what's meant by that. Of course. Fine. Councillor Hanley, anything? Uh, no, I, I was I, I slightly more relaxed about that. Um, I just thought it was, as you said, just part of the part of the community. Um, so I know I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy with this. I'm, I'm happy with this application. Yeah. Catherine Hawkes has her hand up. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Catherine. Okay, thank oh. you. Sorry, my camera's not working. Otherwise, I would put that on. That would have been easier for me to wave. Um, yes, I just, I really just wanted to add to, to back up what you were saying, Councillor Ellington, that that faith-based activity is one of the many topics covered by community-led plans. Um, even as far back as when sort of Cambridge or Acre were doing this, and, and nationally, that's one of the main sections. Not just in terms of the buildings, but in terms of the activities that 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 emanate from those different faith-based. Um, locations and groups um, and the idea behind that is that obviously those groups can help promote community cohesion so um, it's it's not something to overemphasize but equally it's something that shouldn't be um, neglected when you're looking at doing a community-led plan thank you thank you okay thanks Catherine I think it was really uh, that's really helpful to get that clarity um, and I think if it's worth if any documentation goes out I think it is worth using a form of words similar to what you've just used now i agree with you it's very important in a community um so it, it, it would be worth mentioning that um i've just got one other question uh, yes Councillor Arlington, if that's fine um so in terms of the um the activities uh, this it looks as if there's quite a lot of activities down here um and is that the team the core team of five people they are the core team, um, but they're bringing in other groups as and when to help put this plan together. But the, the core team is five people who are running it. Yes, that, that, that would be the steering group. And then you have working groups that work and do the specific um, actions through the action plan. OK, and, and presumably um, the communities team is able to provide any training or support to the core team. 
Exactly. We've got it all on our web pages at the moment, all the support that we can offer. And we've um, we've consulted and told um, all community groups of the, of the offer that we can support them with. So, yeah. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. So by consensus, are we content with this? Content, Bill? agreed. Yes. Claire? Yes, I'm sorry. I, I wasn't sure whether I didn't want to miss you. Right, we're content. Moving on then, Emma, please. OK, so page 39, we have Histon and Impington Communications. They are a community interest company um, started in 2018 and they publish free online weekly news, information, community events, local jobs, planning applications and property for sale and let in the village. So the website, which also links to a live free um, feed from the High Hub website, contains a directory of local businesses and community groups and a what's on guide. Local residents have benefited from this resource by being able to further connect with their community and take advantage of the many services and facilities that are available to them. The company consists of a board of five directors and a team of volunteers. Um, and what they want to do is they want to make their content more accessible to everybody in the village. And what they'd like is the purchase and installation of two 50 inch digital notice boards, which is like a sort of TV screen um, with floor to ceiling mounting to be placed in the road facing window of Histon Library. So one, one screen will be facing outwards and one will be inwards to maximize, maximize the amount of um, people that will notice them. And um, and it's obviously of, of benefit to those people in the village that have no internet connection or mobile phone so that they can keep up to date with what's going on. Um, total project cost is £5,060.90, of which £2,000 is being requested through us, through the Community Chess um, Grant Fund. Um, £1,000 is now confirmed from the Parish Council. This was confirmed this week. And £2,000... Has been applied to from the Cambridge Community Foundation Open Fund, and £60.90 will be paid by High Hub. Um, the library has already included the relevant cabling and also the power source in anticipation. And in addition, the software development costs will be provided for free by one of the High Hub Web Development Board members. And just to note, a huge amount of in-kind contributions will be provided in creating the news and curating information to be streamed through the notice boards, and this will be on an ongoing basis. Um, they did say that if um, any of the applications, um, such as community, um, the Cambridge Community Foundation, were not successful um, and the money can't be raised, the project won't be able to proceed. We have um, support from councillors Martin Khan, Pippa Halings and County Councillor Ros Hathorn. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, any questions? Any questions? Uh, Councillor Lamb? Uh, yeah, thanks, Emma. Um, just what's the, could you just explain to me what, the, what, what we do here? I mean, you, you, you've said that, you know, the Cambridge Community Foundation haven't taken a decision yet. So mm -hmm. we, would not, we would ordinarily wait until we hear that the full funding is you know, potential is there before we release our our funding. Is that the way it works? Um, I believe I, I, I'm not Catherine will probably be able to be, sort of correct me a little bit more on this one, but um, I, I I'm not sure. I don't know if I don't know. Um, Put my mic on. Sorry, I can come in there. We can <laughs> we can usually send them a grant agreement and an offer letter that states that there is the caveat that if any of their other um, applications are not successful and if therefore the project can't go ahead, then they must return the money. And we can give them reasonable timescales for that based on when they're expecting to hear about those other grants. Um, and if that's acceptable to you, then as long as they get those other grants in, they will keep the money in proceed. And if they don't, we'll have it back. Mm -hmm. I, w I would think that's the way to go. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry to put you on the spot, Emma. <laughs> no, that's fine. So I just wanted to be, uh, to be sure. <laughs> okay. Yes, Dalton, I think this is, has the makings of being a great project. And if it's successful, I can see it being rolled out elsewhere. The kind of information that, you know, easily accessible information in a public place that can easily be updated and um, increased. And I, yeah. I, you know, I can, in the bigger villages, I can see this as being a, an important tool, actually. It's amazing how many uh, elderly people don't have any access 
and and even young people, to be honest. And uh, I I think it's a great idea. Yeah. So are we are we happy with this? Yes. yes. You're happy, Bill. Yes, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Right. Can we move on to? Yep. Um, the last application, which is on um, page 40, which is St Mary and All Saints Church in Willingham. Um, they belong to the Diocese of Ely, a Christian church. They have a church hall known as the Octagon, which is attached to the church building, and it's used for church activities and is also hired out to the general public. Public use um, is quite varied, um, includes art and craft projects, um, mother and baby groups, funeral wakes, bereavement groups, parish council meetings, children's parties and other family celebrations. Um, the current church hall chairs are between 20 and 30 years old. They're well used. Um, <clears throat> many of them are now broken or damaged. So funding is required for 50 new stacking chairs and links between the chairs and also a trolley to transport them. Uh, so over the total project costs of 4,752.53, this is their cheapest quote, 1,752.41 is being requested through our community chess grant fund and the remaining 3,012 pence has been raised through two recent community events and via donations. Um, obviously because of the church um, funding the church um, side of things, um, the church haven't been contacted for a financial contribution because legally they cannot give to churches. Um, um, and Councillor Handley, I know that you've um, you've seen the chairs at a recent parish council meeting and agreed that replacements would be suitable for an application to this fund. Um, so yes, any questions? I think that's down to you and me, Claire. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I, knowing how important chairs are for meetings, and uh, I think if you're sitting on an old broken chair that's very uncomfortable, that you can end up feeling pretty sore at the end of a, a, a either a, an arts and craft session or a meeting. So, I, I'd be. In, very much in favour of this and I and although it's a church and, and we can't give money to churches I'm persuaded that it is used for a wide variety of community groups and, and in many places the church or the church hall is the only place that one that the community can get together. Um, uh, that's not entirely true in Willingham they do have quite a number of large halls but nonetheless oh, this right. is uh, well used and and it's one of the things that I found in this application I needed to just think through whether it was adequately used by other organizations in the village and not just those that were connected to the church um, and I am satisfied that that in fact it is that the octagon is used and is a separate building as it were from the church although it's attached to it. Um, so, and a very pleasant building, I must say. It's a lovely building to be in. Um, so, yes, do. I, I just want to sort of clarify I, I, the comment that I um, said that I thought it would be suitable. I think what I actually said was something like it's worth a go. <laughs> I, don't think I, gave, I, don't think, I don't think I gave them the, the gauge say so that it would definitely be um, an agreed application so I just wanted no, to no, clarify no. that it's um, no. you know I thought it was I thought it was I encouraged them to apply but um, yeah you know that, that's yeah. all I think we all support our villages when they ask don't we um, so I'm I'm content if you're content I'm, I'm actually happy with the volunteers we've had mm. as individuals yeah it's a really nice building no you wouldn't no you don't feel that you're you're uh, in the church. So we are agreed that we will recommend John as long as he's happy. Yeah. All right, he's happy. Woohoo. Right, moving on. Well, I don't, I think we've come to the end of this agenda. We're not. Yeah, notes, date of the next meeting is the 25th of March at 10 a.m. Thank All right, much. thank you. Thank you.
thank, thank you. Thank, thank you to the officers and members. Yeah, thank, thank, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay, bye. bye. bye well presented. Bye. In done.